Is uh, Bookie Beats in a blink? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing what this life can bring On a spy, cold as ice and the spice will sting You're on a line, thin as wire and your eyes are king Let it slide, it's alright when you die in a blink yeah. It's amazing what this life can bring On a spy, cold as ice and the spice will sting You're on a line, thin as wire and your eyes are king Let it slide, it's alright when you die in a blink Welcome to the Fresh Air Open House everyone Thank you so much for coming my name's Zane, I'm uh, part of the Fresh 92.7 team, I do a bit of on-air stuff, I work as the content assistant as well, trying to make everything happen. Um, and it's really, really cool to actually take Open House out of, the, uh, out of the city for the first time and up north with our mates here at Northern Sound System. And Northern Sound System are absolute legends, thank you so much for partnering with us on this one. And also to the City of Playford by extension, you guys are all really, really amazing. And with that, I'm going to invite Caroline to the stage and the Man of the Hour Trials. Hello. Hi, hey. guys. Hi. Uh, I'm Caroline Tucker, and I host um, a show called Fresh Air on Monday nights at Fresh. Um, so today we'll be uh, interviewing Charles from the Funk Wars and asking him some questions about uh, his career in the industry, what it's like to do production, um, writing techniques, and I guess just his overall experience um, in the music industry. And then we'll throw it out to you guys, and you can ask him some questions yourself. All right, are we ready? Yeah, why not? <laughs> ready, set, go. <laughs> How did you first really get your start in music production? Um, I started in production by overdubbing lots of cassettes and tapes because that's how old I am. I used to have cassettes. Um, I would hear songs that I liked and this, they didn't end right, so I would make them end right. So I would do that a lot. Um, and then I, I found a lot of things on, on the computer where I could actually go in and manipulate things. So I started doing that and putting drums that I liked over songs to make them sound how I wanted them to sound. Because I like computers and I liked messing with other people's songs. So I did that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you were a kid, you spent time in Wales. And according to a couple of interviews, you had a rough go from time to time there. What role did music play around that time? And are there any artists in particular from that time that still resonate with you now? Um, yeah, I was when I was when I when I lived in Wales, I was like the darkest kid in the country, so, <laughs> so that was something. Uh, so I found a lot of refuge in lots of rap music, like N.W.A. for instance, mm -hmm. which stayed with me forever and ever and ever. Um, that that was my favorite thing in the world to go back home and just bang N.W.A. real loud, much to my grandparents' disgust. <laughs> Now, we'll talk about the other projects you've been involved in in a bit, um, but let's begin with the big one, the Funk Horse. Yeah, the biggest one. The not? biggest one. <laughs> now, <laughs> shout outs, everyone. Uh, you hear the Funk Horse? There, there they are. <laughs> now, you've been around since 1999, just a <sighs> fresh amount of like 17 years, nothing <sighs> casual. And in that time, we have bounced to a few different labels. You work with countless MCs and you performed all over the shop. With that being said, when you performed or when you formed the Funk Wars, was there always an expectation for success? <laughs> we're, we're still, we're, yeah, we're, we're, it's, it, I get, that's funny. Um, <laughs> defining success is funny when you put the Oars name into it. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, no, we didn't think anything would ever happen, ever. Uh, ever um we're surprised when we finish songs <laughs> it was like holy shit that's a song yeah no that was the coolest thing about the oars is that we just made we just made music because we enjoyed it and we had a lot of fun kind of outgrossing each other in songs you know someone would do a verse and sester would lay like the the rankest one and i'm like whoa i gotta lay a ranker one now so i would <laughs> Oh, we we had a we had a guy um, who was like our first manager, Kirk Kirk Ray, who I, I I blame for giving me everything, all the knowledge on rap music. This guy was like my my Yoda on how to listen to rap and what songs I should be listening to and whatever. And he kind of said one day like, I think you guys have got an album. And we're like, what? We got a what? <laughs> and we had an album. So we we put a massive album out. Like it was an awful album. I won't even tell you what it's called so you don't look for it because we pulled it off the shelves so long ago because it's awful. Um, but yeah, we, we had an album out of nowhere and then Kirk was like, man, you should try and put this out. And at that stage, we had no idea what that even meant, what, what putting it out meant because we just put it on cassettes because again, I'm old as hell. 
So we put it on cassettes and we would go to parties and just bum rush the stereo and put our shit on. Like, listen, listen how mad this is. And in <laughs> retrospect, it's awful. It's so bad. So we're lucky we got out of those parties alive. <laughs> so Sesta and I, because Sesta is, is my production partner in crime. Hansen just turns up every once in a while and drops a disgusting rhyme. <laughs> Bless him. Um, but Sesta and I learned together. We, we kind of figured out how music works and reverse engineered things. So now we can hear a sample and, and know what's what. And we, now we know what kind of bass line we want. So we can play it and we can put it in, which is a big difference. Because before we were limited with whatever we found at the op shop, you know, like we just, we still just dig in dollar crates because it's the best thing in the world. <laughs> um, but now we know how to play a lot of the things we listen to, which is cool. It's kind of opened us, opened up our production style a lot and made us, uh, it, it, we're in a place where we can actually put our ideas down now that we think about and not have to wait for the right sample. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now you've worked with your fair share of vocalists and MCs and as a producer and an MC yourself, how do you know when someone is getting it right and what's your go-to move if things aren't moving along fast enough? Um, I'm, 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 I'm surprisingly pretty nice to work with in the studio. <laughs> I'm very, don't suck. I'm very accommodating. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've been on the mic and there's just a jerk producer behind the boards and like trying to rush you through it, and that's the worst feeling in the world to get, to get the take out of you. So, even when I'm not into it, which is heaps of the time, but I'll never tell people that. I'm just banging along like, yes, this is killer. I'm mad. Amazing. And then they usually come out with a mad take and it's like, oh, I knew it, yes. I knew that back pain was worth it. <laughs> but I, I just positivity has always been the one for me in a studio. Like you can make the angriest rap song in the world, but as long as you're laughing and having lols in between takes, you're kicking ass and you're gonna come out with a good song, always. Um, we've been waiting for In Case of Emergency for some time. When is the new album coming out? <laughs> comes out this year, surprisingly. <laughs> yeah, uh, Oz are uh, notoriously... Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Exclusive! <laughs> so we, we, d we did a whole album and we, and we didn't like it. So we just turned it off and started again. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's been three years between records, which used to be a normal time to take. So, you know, we're actually finished, which is, which is exciting. So we've got a song coming out in maybe a month, which is exclusive. Uh, Tune yeah. into Fresh Air, Monday nights, 8 till 10 p.m. Yeah, may maybe you guys will play it. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't fit many of those things from before. <laughs> how you going, Charles? Oh, yeah, mate. All right. Yeah, it's all right. Um, I was just wondering, genuine question for everyone. Out of everything you do, music, production, performing, creating, the moment where you sit there and you realize you've created something, what gives you the most, what gets you the most giddy? What's the most happy you've been when it comes to being around music my favorite thing in the world hands down is making a song for someone else and watching them perform it that's easily the number one thing always so to use draft as an example again every time i see him play a massive show or even a smaller show from the, when we started out to where he's at now watching him do a set or watching the hoods do a set to a, a beat i made anything like watching that like kind of standing back like a Geppetto puppet master, like, yes, jump, fantastic. This is the bit where I made, ah, oh, there it is. That's the, that's the best feeling in the world. Like nothing, nothing makes you feel better than that. Like writing the song is cool, recording the song is a pain in the ass, but watching it go down live when it's completely out of your control, that's the money, that's the best. Yeah, Draft and I made an album called Brothers Grimm with a song, Jimmy Rakai, which gets smashed on the radio all the time. And he, he rapped that next to my shitty cat litter box in my laundry. For real. <laughs> for real, for real. I had nowhere to put the mic. And like Adrian's seen it. Kay, Kay's rapped there a bunch of times too. My cats are very important to me. So where they, you know, them shitting is, is a priority. So I would let that litter box just get mega full. And then Draft would go in and do his thing. And he smashed it. And then, you know, yeah, hilarious story. <laughs> so it's not so much always about where you're at either. Like, if, if you've got a cool ass song, buy like a $10 Tandy mic and just smash it at home and get maybe, maybe get a cat little box and see how that goes for you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming once again. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.